that was forever. Our Father, um, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, sir. Start off giving our praises to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah. Go. Alright. Um, I'm Alan Tibet. Um, Brother Masha. Alright. And um we're just gonna go into a quick one, going into I Day of Atonement today. Another video may come up on the actual day. Uh I Day of Atonement. And we're just gonna start off and we're gonna pretty much get into get some um, Eden, right? Go. Alright. Job. All right, this is um Job chapter 30, and I'm going to start at the top. But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose father I would not have disdained to have sat with the dogs of my flock. Yet, where unto them might be strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing to the wilderness. In former times, desolate and waste. Who cut up meadows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Among the bushes they braided, under the nettles, nettles they were gathered together. They were children of food, yet base men. They were violent in the earth. Uh, you know, and that's a that's a good point. You know, the importance of today going through this day of atonement, you know, and actually putting the emphasis on why and how we got into the and why we need a day of atonement. Mm -hmm. Because Israel's one of Israel's biggest issues have always been following the 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 gods of these other nations. Right, following the heathens. and following the heathen nations. So, we we sometimes we would like to blame other nations for certain things when it's actually it was taken upon us. Had we taken upon ourselves to follow and do what the Most High showed us in Deuteronomy, what? Let's go over here. I'm gonna show you the reasoning why why we have to atone for the things that we didn't do. Mm. You want me to finish these probably, last two yeah, verses? That's, that's, yeah, let's finish that. All right. And now, I, their son, yes, I am they by will. They abhor me, they flee from me. They spare not to spit in my face. Um, these other nations are not going to spare any expense because these things was prophesied mm -hmm. that we would go through them because what is sin? Sin is a transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one thing that Israel has a problem with. It seems to have a problem with authority. So, Okay. Yeah. Which one you want? Let's see. Okay, I got um. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Doing around me the uh. Twenty eight chapter, sixty fourth verse. Mm -hmm. All right. And the Lord shall gather them among all the people, from one end of the earth unto the other, and there they shall serve gods which neither their father have known. Even wood and stone. Uh, and that's going into the ideology of, you know, Christianity and Islam. Mm -hmm. You know, it's saying we're going to be still serving these idols even in this land. God. And um, over here in Deuteronomy 28, um, 28 and 40, 48. Mm-hmm. Right. 28 and 48. Mm -hmm. All right. Therefore, Hold should, on, Salaki. Let's go to 45. Let's go 45. to Deuteronomy 28 and 45. All right. Moreover, all these curses should come upon thee and should pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hast hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his status which he command thee. 
and thou shalt be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Come. So the day of atonement, we have to atone for what our forefathers, you know, the laws that they broke in this particular time. You know, it's easier to cast, you know, or to say these other nations, this, these other nations, that. But it's, it's going to have to come a time that we're going to have to take take it upon ourselves, that we're going to have to take responsibility for the things that we have done and what we have not done. Mm -hmm. um, All right. This is um, 47 verse. Because thou service not the Lord thy power with joyfulness oh. and with gladness and with a, a gladness of heart and the abundance of all things. So pretty much saying because we weren't happy to be serving the Lord and doing what we supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, that is why, you know, we were thrown into this captivity. Right? We supposed to be joyful. You know, it's supposed to make you feel good to serve the Lord. Come. All right. It ain't supposed to be a punishment. You're supposed to be happy. Therefore, should thou serve thy enemies, mm. which the Lord should send against thee in hunger and in thirst mm -hmm. and in nakedness and want of all things. And he should put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So because you won't do right, the Lord said he's just going to send you to the enemies and then you'll be glad to be back where you're supposed to be. That's right. All right? You'll appreciate the goodness that the Lord is showing to you because our people took it for granted. The Lord should bring a nation against thee from far from the ends of the earth as the swift as the eagle fly, a nation whose tongues thou should not understand, a nation of first covenants which should not regard the person of the old They'll show favor to the young. God. And that's getting into the Elamites. And that's it. You know, and I, and it also go to show you, where's that scripture where it says, if I would have chose any other nation, they would have followed my laws, statutes, and command. They would have kept my laws. Mm -hmm. And so, really, these nations are, they have to do what they're designed to do mm -hmm. because the Most High ordained them to be in that position that they're in mm -hmm. because of our wickedness. You know, so we, we this is number one. We got to atone for the things that we have done and what our forefathers had done prior mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, let me see what that is. Where okay, why you looking up there? But man, I'm gonna get this on um, Ezekiel your eight. You know, uh, this is eight. Luck, yeah. All right, um, Ezekiel 8, and, all right, and I'm gonna start at the seventh verse. All right, and he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked upon it, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig not in the wall, and when I have dug in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in. And behold, the wicked abominations that die, that they do here. All right? So this is going into the wickedness that Israel was doing. Mm -hmm. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creepy thing, an abominable beast, and all idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the walls and around the box. So pretty much no uh, worshiping and serving all these other gods, these pagan gods. And I stood before them, Seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood, there was a Joshua, the son of Shumpah, which every man his um, censer in his hand in a thick coat, coat of incense went up. Right. Mm -hmm. the, then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do? So it's going into what, you know, the um, older people were doing. Mm -hmm. Israel do in the dark, every man in the chamber of his imagination. For they say, the Lord sees us not, and the Lord has forsaken us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there also was something that was going on before the flood, you know, that they thought they could get away with doing things by building groves. And they got up under these groves and got the heavens, couldn't look down and see what they was doing and would worship these other gods too. Oh, fun on that. All right. Uh, 
And he said unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Mm -hmm. So he said, This is going to be even worse than what you've seen the ancient man doing. Mm -hmm. Then he brought me to the door of the gates of the Lord house, which was towards where the north. And behold, there sit women weeping for Tammuz. And is. right now, that goes into our people to this very day, mm -hmm. putting up a Christmas tree, which is a, really a Tammuz tree. You know, that is weeping for Tammuz, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it tells us very clearly. I guess I go over and get that real fast and then come back. In Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, that we are not so even supposed to be participating in, uh, you know, that holiday. Mm -hmm. So, we know, we're getting closer to that holiday again. You know, they bring it out. Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, hear the words which the Lord spoken to you, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen. Mm -hmm. So do not be taking up their holidays. They include every holiday they got. Oh. You know, it's something off about them. You are not supposed to be learning their ways. And be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens, for the heathens are dismayed at them. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the works of the hands of the workman and with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with a nail and with a hammer, that it moves not. All right? That's so, just a clear, clear, clear distinction of a Christmas tree right there. Without before that was Christ. Or anything so anytime these christian churches want to say oh we're doing it for the kids we're doing it for christ you're not doing it for neither one because this is in jeremiah well before hundreds of years before christ's birth yep all right and um let's get back on okay the um, ezekiel the nine at the 15th verse then he said unto me had thou see this o son of man turn ye again and thou shalt see greater abominations than these so I wonder what's going to be greater hmm. than these women weeping for Talmuds. Hmm. What can be a greater abomination than it? Uh, and he brought me uh, to the inner courts of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between about five and twenty men, so twenty-five men, with their backs towards where the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun towards where the east. So the man going out is what's a greater abomination than the women going on. And, and the funny thing is, is the parable of how we're still worshiping sun, moon, and stars today when the scriptures clearly told Israel, don't worship anything in the heavens or make any type of graven images for the heavens above or in the earth beneath, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he clearly told us that. All right. But it goes back into that yoke of iron that's been put around our necks mm -hmm. and, and our people are destroyed. And so the reasoning for this particular feast day is to atone for that sin, not to, to, to continue to perpetuate the things that our forefathers had done by falling into these foolish traditions and these foolish ways of men. Right. You know, we got another precept up on that one. Um, Actually, I was I, it, over here. We got the Maccabees, about where, um, where at the time of the Maccabees, where our people were, you know, making making um, a covenant pretty much with the heathen. So you talking same about things that we're doing today? Mm -hmm. Well, first Maccabees, or uh -huh. uh, first Maccabees, um, one and one and ten, right? And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes. Son of Antiochus the king, who had been in Hashish at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty-seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. All right, in those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuade many, saying, "Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us." But since we have departed from him, we had had much sorrow. And Salakia, and today. This goes into the facet of your um, fraternities, your Greek fraternities that these black folks love to join themselves unto. These things are still taking place unto this day. They're still pledging to this particular covenant that their forefathers made in the time of. And to be honest, even before the truth, you got any kind of spiritual discernment. The stuff them fraternities do just look weird and exactly. out there. You have to. And you, 
it's almost. I mean, I had no desire to be a part of any of them even before the truth. So, so check this out. This is where Esau gets his, you know, because Esau is a Hebrew, and so he looked at the things of sacrifice. So, in the ways, in order to serve Yahweh, he required a sacrifice, mm -hmm. and so in order for you to serve Esau in his kingdom, he requires you to do a sacrifice. You know, so. yeah, what these scriptures are going to get into next. Right. So, 12th verse. So, this device pleased them well. Then, certain other people here, so forward, hearing they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heat. Come on, man. And that's pretty much going into almost every organized type every, of religion. They this is. goes into all of them, and then it goes into your 501c3s, that goes yeah, into your say, NAACPs, hey, all of your little. Um, all, all of these organizations, they tie right back into this. Yeah, and I believe most of your camps do too. Yep, majority of the camps do too. All right. Wherein upon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Mm -hmm. All right. And we know they place of the exercise was a gym mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of homosexual behaviors. Completely naked, naked bathhouses were nothing but men, no women in it. All right. And he made them uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined them 